Now, running a marathon, I think we can all agree, is hard enough. Well, that's if you could even get off the sofa to even start to train for one. But how about running seven of them in some of the most unforgiving corners of the world, including the Arctic Circle? Well, 23-year-old Louis Alexander is doing that, and his motivation is raising money to try to beat Alzheimer's disease for a very personal reason. And Louis joins me now. Uh, Louis, so uh, well done. Tell us a little bit more about this challenge that, you, that you're taking on. Where are you going to be running? Sure. So I'm currently taking on a global challenge for a global cause. And I'm currently running seven marathons, as you said, through the most remote corners of all seven continents. So, so far, I've ran through the desert in Africa, through a desert in Asia, I've ran through Alaska in North America, and I've also ran through the Australian outback for the Oceania chapter. And I'm now approaching, approaching a really exciting time with three months of three back-to-back -back expeditions through the Amazon jungle in October, Arctic Circle in November, and Antarctica in December. So running in all those different climatic zones, that mm. must be really challenging. You know, your training to run in a really hot country must be different, presumably, to your training to run in a really cold environment. Absolutely. You know, where I started this project was in the desert in Africa. Temperatures were close to 40 degrees, which, as a redhead, you can imagine, has its own challenges. Uh, and, I'll <laughs> and we'll conclude this project in Antarctica, where temperatures will be as low as minus 25. So there's a huge contrast. And as you said, these are not normal conditions. These are abnormal conditions, and therefore my training can't be normal either, so I'm often preparing in uh, hot chambers, cold chambers, doing everything I can to prepare myself as best as possible. Now, you're running to try to raise awareness uh, and money for Alzheimer's research. Why is that? Sure. So my grandfather, Captain Rick Taylor, he served in the British Army for 38 years. He served all around the world, but it was sadly his battle against dementia which took his life. And I had the huge, huge honour at his funeral of delivering his eulogy. And, and there I made a promise, a promise to support the fight against dementia uh, until we find a cure. And as my challenges grow, so must my purpose. So today I'm publishing an open letter to the Prime Minister. You brought your letter uh, along with it. <laughs> yeah, what, what are you saying in there? Just briefly summarise what you're saying sure. to the Prime Minister. Sure. So today I'm asking for a £16 million investment into improving diagnostics. So currently in the dementia, currently in England, one in three people with dementia are never formally diagnosed, which is incredibly sad. And it means when these new potentially life-changing treatments do become available, thousands of people are going to be missing out on drugs um, that they deserve and they won't be able to get access to because of inadequate diagnosis. Because, of course, catching it early, and there's been so many advances recently, hasn't there, in medicine, can, can really make a difference. Absolutely. There's been so many, and it's given, inspiring hope in so many millions of us around the country. But the sad fact is, without people being able to get diagnosed accurately and early, then the treatments won't have its full effect. And, and in terms of what you're taking on, these are these are big challenges, aren't they? What's what's been the hardest part of, of all the training that you've been doing so far? Through all the training, it's the consistency. It's turning up every day. It's the consistency of, of, of remembering why you're doing this. And for me, I've got many whys now. I've got many purposes. So that, that's quite an easy thing for me now. I mean. Obviously, the Prime Minister is quite busy the last 24 hours. Absolutely. Lots of big news stories. Absolutely. I mean, do you think that there is much appetite to listen in, in government at the moment? Do you think people are listening to you? I hope so. Dementia is the biggest killer in the UK. Currently, one in four beds, hospital beds, are occupied by dementia patients. So uh, I hope so. And I hope doing this, this challenge, you know, as you said, running all around the world, I hope we can potentially bring a little bit of spotlight back to why why this is so important. And talking about those beds being used, I mean, mm. that, that's key, isn't it? Because it has a massive impact on social care, doesn't it? Absolutely. The, the cost currently on informal and social care is 22.7 billion in this country. Yeah. Uh, why do a challenge like this? I mean, lots of people, you know, they, they have a cause that's dear to their heart, sure. but they don't think I'm going to run marathons, <laughs> you know, in, in, in the most far-flung corners of the world. Why did you choose this to do? Because you've confessed that actually you find running really hard. Absolutely. I still find running really hard. You know, humbling is the most... Uh, running is the most humbling sport out there. And I've been very lucky. I'm 23 now, but I went full-time with these adventures at 22. You know, it's the greatest privilege, in my opinion, on earth to find what you love and then to be able to do it full-time thanks to my wonderful sponsors. So uh, I've been very, very lucky. And last year, I ran 17 marathons in 17 days back to back. In all of those 17 years, my granddad lived with dementia. I've climbed a few mountains. I've swam a few oceans. I've done a few things. But now it's time to take on the pinnacle of running, which is to run all seven continents. And are you going to keep campaigning for, for Alzheimer's research? I mean, is this a, a lifetime for you now? Absolutely. I made the promise at my granddad's funeral now four years ago. And I'll continue to fight for this the rest of my life. Well, best of luck to you, Louis. Um, it's quite a challenge, it's fair to say, and uh, I hope you get a response from your letter as well, even though the Prime Minister is quite busy. Thanks very much, Louis Thank Alexander. Thank you very much.